Hey, welcome in. Well, here's the headline. WNBA star says players judged more than women soccer players due to race, height, and sexuality. Is that true? Is that true? I, I think there's one way you could actually solve this, actually. You could take all of the players from the WNBA and get them to sit down and watch a WNBA game. <laughs> I really think that would work. Then they would just go, oh, now I get why nobody cares. Yeah, this isn't entertaining. But I guess nobody's ever showed them one of their own games. I can only assume. But there's also, I mean, if you're talking about a comparison between WNBA and women's soccer, there is a big, big difference there in terms of popularity around the world. But anyway, let's get into this article a little bit here. Let's see, it says here, the WNBA has less support from the public than women's soccer because society, it's always society's fault, doesn't perceive women's basketball players as favorably as women's soccer players, according to Seattle Storm player Sue Bird. And if you've never heard of the Seattle Storm or Sue Bird, well, you're not alone. Nobody else has either. Not to be mean here, but it's just, I'm sorry, if you're doing something wrong and you decide it's society's problem, okay, that needs to have a little bit of a pushback. It's just this you know, the constant victimhood, it just becomes uh, really grating after a while. During an interview with CNN on Sunday, Bird said that many soccer players tend to be, quote, cute little white girls. <laughs> really? Really? I mean, I'm sure there's some cute uh, little white girl soccer players. Is that most of them? I don't think so. Not the women's soccer teams I've seen. Instead of tall, black, and gay, like in women's basketball. An argument recently made by her girlfriend, soccer star Megan Rapinoe. Yeah, and Rapinoe, is, uh, she's quite vocal, too, about uh, her victimhood. Bird, a four-time Olympic gold medalist, also suggested that the WNBA can't simply replicate the marketing formula for professional women's soccer. And why is that? Why is that? Why can't they replicate it? Well, you know, it's not going to be their fault, is it? It's going to be society's fault. Quote, the problem is how society and how the outside world is willing to accept the cute girl next door, but not willing to accept or embrace or not judge these basketball players who are tall, black, and gay. That's kind of, to me, where the issue is. Okay, nobody cares about gay anymore. All right, can we just get that? Let's just put that to rest. Nobody cares about the gay anymore. Black NBA seems to do pretty damn well. Serena Williams has done very well, very well. And she's a woman, and she's also black. And everybody knows who she is, and she makes a lot of money from endorse endorsements, and she's very popular. So maybe it's not that. Tall? Really? Is, is that it now? Is it, there's, I guess tall people are now victims as well. So I guess somebody better tell all the male basketball players in the NBA that they're being oppressed now. All of them, regardless of race too. It's, it's height. We're, we're all really against height these days, right? So it's, it's none of these things. <laughs> these things are not things that will prevent you from being popular. And here's the thing about women's soccer, which is much more popular and they get more ink. And the thing is about the, about the soccer, the women's soccer, is it's only actually popular at two times, the World Cup and the Olympics. That's it. Nobody cares any other time. And the thing about soccer is, or football as it's called everywhere outside of North America, is that it is the world's most popular game. It is the world's most popular sport. You know, if you leave North America, nobody cares about American football. Nobody cares about hockey. Nobody cares about basketball. I mean, that's an exaggeration. You know, in Europe, some countries care. But even in Europe, soccer is still the big sport there. Yeah, there's a few places that have got some basketball leagues, you know, Spain. But if you walk into anywhere, any bar in Spain, they don't have a basketball game on. They're very unlikely to, right? They've got soccer on. So soccer is just a much, much more popular game worldwide. And it's much, much more marketable. So, you know, soccer just has a major advantage right there. Plus, people only really care uh, during two worldwide events. So anyway, let's see. Uh, Bird was asked about the sport's perception in light of a recent article by Rapinoe, who argued that such differences in public opinion were due to uh, the usual ism and homophobia. Why do they just, they just have to keep banging that drum? I'm, no, it's nobody else's fault. It's your fault. It's not society's fault. If you want to find those things, you can find them in much greater supply. All you have to do is leave like a Western country. 
You know, why don't they start up a, a women's a, a women's basketball league in Saudi Arabia? You know, then they'll genuinely have something to complain about. Anyway, let's see. Ahead of the Seattle Storm's fourth WNBA championship win, Rapino wrote, This country has a deep history of racism and a deep history of homophobia. Okay, every country, for, for one, has a deep history of homophobia. All of them, all right? And there are many, many places, very populous uh, countries in the world right now where you've really got genuine, genuine um, uh, hatred and bigotry on a national level, okay? So that, that so who cares? Okay, the, the history of the country. It's every country. So shut up. Just going to interrupt for one second to say, if you like this content, subscribe so you can see more. Thanks a lot. Uh, let's see, a deep history of racism. Yeah, okay, that, that's the history of the world. You know, the only places in the world where you can make these kinds of accusations and make these claims is a country like the United States and, and still feel safe, where you can do this and still feel safe. There's a lot of the world where you could not. So maybe just a quick reality check here. Anyway, let's end this off. Uh, Rapineau, who has made a habit out of advocating for left-wing causes, wrote that society needs to be wary about considering support for women's soccer a breakthrough in feminism because, as she suggests, the support only extends to white girls' next-door sports. Okay. You know, most of the women playing soccer around the world are not white. You understand that, right? But I guess that's probably an inconvenient fact that she wouldn't like. I mean, what is the point here? That uh, it's not a just society until people give lots of money to female basketball players? Is that the point? It's it's not a fair society until people watch things that they don't enjoy. <laughs> I guess for equity or fairness or something. I don't know. This is it's so ridiculous. Let's see. Um, she says, "quote That's not feminism, or at least not the kind of feminism that I'm here for." Oh, well, what kind of feminism is uh, she here for? I got a feeling we may not like it very much. I don't have any time for any kind of feminism that's not real and total. So real and total feminism, that doesn't sound very fun. And not uh, if it's anything like the feminism I've seen around recently. From race to class. So what does race have to do with feminism? What does class have to do with feminism? I mean, both men and women are of different classes, right? Uh, let's see, to religion. What does religion have to do with it? I'm guessing it's a, a opposition to one high-profile religion and a total fetishization of another high-profile religion, uh, to gender identity, to sexual orientation, to everything in between. So this is what's happened now. So feminism has just become everything, right? Just a bunch of stuff. No, you thought feminism was about women? Hell no! <laughs> it's about it's about class and religion. How much do you want to bet there that uh, Marxism? It's about Marxism too. I think generally when they talk about class, that's what they're really saying. They're saying I like Marxism, even though I don't understand it. And by the way, I want more money. But anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you just like to listen, there's a podcast, Radio Baloney, The Richie Baloney Show. It's on every platform, including Spotify. Thank you. See you next time.